evolves its sphere construction has an interesting application in the interpretation and prediction of electron diffraction patterns. The wavelength of electron beam is much, much, much smaller than the spacing of direct lattice points. This has a consequence in the reciprocal space that radius of evolved sphere is much, much, much larger than a spacing of reciprocal lattice points. Let us look at this through an example. Aluminium is face centered cubic with a lattice parameter of 4.05 angstrom. If we look at the reciprocal lattice of aluminium, then this will be a body centered cubic lattice with a lattice parameter A star is equal to 2 by A and with the value of A for aluminium, this turns out to be 0.5 angstrom inverse. Now, if we use X-ray and let us say we use iron K alpha, then the wavelength of X-ray is 1.94 angstrom and so the radius of the evolved sphere, which is reciprocal of the wavelength, turns out again to be 0.5 angstrom inverse. Thus, the radius of the evolved sphere is equal to the lattice parameter of the reciprocal space. If we use electron beam at 100 kV, then the wavelength is much shorter, 0 0.04 angstrom, and this gives us the evolved sphere radius for electron beams as 25 angstrom inverse. In terms of A star, this is 50 times A star. This is what we mean when we say that the radius of the evolved sphere is very large. So this shows a section of the reciprocal lattice parallel to the face of the cube. This is built up by little squares of edge length A star. Let us consider this point as the origin of the reciprocal lattice point O O O. The electron beam passes through this origin. And if we draw the evolved sphere that is of radius A star, this is really a very small sphere, the section for, of which is shown here. If I wish to draw an uh, evolved sphere of electron beam in this, then I need a sphere of radius 50 A star. It's difficult to accommodate that sphere in this figure. 50 A star radius means I have to go from the origin 50 A star up. Let us, uh, let me count. So 1 A star, 2 A star, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's all my figure here is accommodating. And I have to go 50 A star. So the center of the evolved sphere is really much, much, much above the top edge of this screen. So the evolved sphere is really large and cannot be drawn in full on this screen. However, part of the evolved sphere can be drawn and let me draw that shown in orange here. And as all of us living on this earth know that part of a, a small part of a large sphere appears to be flat. So a small part of the evolved sphere close to the origin as you can see here is appearing to be a flat plane. So evolved sphere in the case of electron beam evolved sphere part of the evolved sphere close to the origin can be treated as a flat plane perpendicular to the electron beam. So let us look at that evolved sphere with the lattice points lying on them. The reciprocal lattice point which lie on the evolved sphere correspond to planes which satisfy the Bragg condition of diffraction. So for each of the lattice point here, there will be a corresponding diffracted beam. And if I have a recording surface parallel to the evolved surface, then on this recording surface, each of the beam corresponding to these reciprocal lattice point will be recorded as a diffracted spot. So for example, 
the origin of the reciprocal lattice point reciprocal lattice ooo point corresponds to the transmitted beam so corresponding to that there will be an spot which is the transmitted spot or the central spot of the diffraction pattern any other diff uh, any other reciprocal lattice point lying on this evolved surface correspond to a diffracted beam and will give a diffracted spot on the recording surface similarly all these reciprocal lattice point lying on the evolved sphere will give their corresponding diffracted beam and hence corresponding diffracted spot on the recording surface this is what will constitute the electron diffraction pattern thus the electron diffraction pattern is nothing but a section of the reciprocal lattice perpendicular to the electron beam this is a very simple interpretation let us use this interpretation to predict an electron diffraction pattern from an fcc crystal with a beam traveling in the 110 direction in a direct space this is a difficult problem because i have to consider the interaction of electron beam with each of the atom generating a scattered wave and then i have to add the scattered wave from all the atoms in given directions to generate the diffracted beams however let us transport this problem to reciprocal space where the corresponding reciprocal lattice is a bcc lattice for the same electron beam di direction all i have to do to find the diffracted diffraction pattern is to take a section of this reciprocal lattice perpendicular to this beam this section is shown in color here you can see that this is a rectangular section with the lattice points lying on this section highlighted the ratio of the edge lengths of this section is 1 is to root 2 because one side of this rectangle is the edge of the cube whereas the other side is the face diagonal of the cube so these spots now these reciprocal lattice point correspond to the diffracted spots and thus the diffraction pattern will appear something like this this of course is a unit cell of the diffraction pattern since the reciprocal lattice is periodic using the periodicity of these points i can add additional points to extend the diffraction pattern and complete it thus the diffraction pattern for 110 beam direction from an fcc crystal will have this appearance similarly for any given electron beam direction one can predict the diffracted beam just by taking a section of the reciprocal lattice thank you